few weeks ago, I did a video on a subject that had been in the news recently, the possible creation of time crystals. And I learned two things from making that video. One, it's a much more popular subject than I thought it was. And two, I know nothing about time crystals. But that's kind of the point of the live streams. They're not really meant to be that well researched. It's just kind of like, hey, I found this cool thing. Check this out. But the overwhelming response to this led me to believe that this is something that definitely does deserve the full Answers with Joe treatment, which it's going to get right now. Oh, did it not? When you hear the term time crystals, you immediately think of something really cool in sci-fi, like something out of Doctor Who, but spoilers, not so much. That doesn't mean they're not interesting. They're super interesting. They just don't, you know, power a TARDIS or anything. The explanation we keep hearing is that time crystals are crystals whose atomic structures repeat both in space and time. Like the reason crystals become crystals is because the atoms of that particular element bond in such a way that they repeat in patterns over and over again, which creates a crystalline structure. That's repeating in three dimensions. Was, it, was I just voguing? What was that? But time crystals repeat in four dimensions. They also repeat in time. So there you go. That clears it all up, right? All right, so I'm going to do my best to explain this, but I'm going to tell you right now, after all the research I've done, I'm still not 100% sure I get it, so I might get something wrong. If I do, correct me in the comments. I know you will. But time as a construct relies on cause and effect, one thing preceding the other, always trying to reach a state of equilibrium or zero-point energy. Like if I drop this coffee cup, it will break. That's cause and effect. I will never break you. So if you have a row of atoms repeating in a crystal and you send energy along that line, it will pass through one atom, then another, all the way down until the system returns to equilibrium, or zero-point energy. But with time crystals, atoms are connected through quantum entanglement in repeating patterns, so that atoms down the chain would feel the effect before the cause. So energy sent down the line would repeat over and over again, making it impossible to return to equilibrium. That's why they're also called non-equilibrium matter. And that's also why you keep hearing people describe it as jello that never stops jiggling. Because even in its lowest energy state, the atoms keep moving. Now that might be an oversimplification of how all this works, but that's the best way I can explain it. And one question that I did get asked several times in a live stream is whether or not this breaks the law of conservation of momentum. And the answer is yes. It very does, which is why this is such a big deal, and I don't think I quite grasped that when I did the live stream earlier. Because there's an even more fundamental law of the universe called time translation symmetry, which basically states that the laws of physics must work the same in all places at all times. And if they don't work the same in all places at all times, then that's considered broken symmetry. And if you have a particular type of matter that moves without using any energy, that seems to be a different laws of physics than you see in other places. So that would break time translation symmetry. But when Nobel Prize winning physicist Frank Wilczek first proposed this in 2012, he suggested a possible loophole. He argued there's two different types of broken symmetry. There's explicit broken symmetry and there's spontaneous broken symmetry. He argues that if it's broken explicitly, then the laws of physics don't have symmetry anymore. But if it's broken spontaneously, then the laws of physics still have symmetry, it's just that nature chose a system that doesn't have symmetry. In other words, if the laws of nature allow these atoms to be arranged in a certain way, then they're still behaving in accordance to the laws of nature. Does that sound like a cheat to you? That sounds like a cheat to me. Regardless, the idea has been tantalizing enough that teams of researchers have been working on this for the last few years, and just recently, two different teams have announced that they've been able to do it. The first team was from the University of Maryland. They took 10 ytterbium atoms and used a laser to create an electromagnetic field around the atoms, which entangled various atoms in repeating patterns before blasting it with a second laser that jostled the atoms. And as predicted, once the energy was introduced into the system, it never stopped. And in fact, after a while, it started moving in an oscillating pattern that was not created by the laser in the first place. But the team from Harvard did it in a totally different way. They used molecules from something called nitrogen vacancy centers, which are flaws in the center of diamonds. Because you know, Harvard, they must use diamonds. <laughs> I do declare. But the fact that they were able to do it in such different ways is encouraging. That means that maybe it's not really that hard to do and there might be hundreds of different ways to pull it off. Which is really great because there's actually some really cool applications for this. First of all, it makes the perfect timepiece. If you have matter that oscillates at a particular frequency without using any energy, that's about as 
accurate as you can possibly get. But perhaps the most exciting application for this is in quantum computing, because they think that those entangled atoms in the crystalline structure could actually store stable qubits of information, which is really cool. Now, as always, any kind of major announcement like this needs to be taken with a grain of salt. Hey, salt is also a crystal. These kinds of major discoveries have a way of falling apart upon further scrutiny, but we're gonna be going through peer review and all kinds of further experimentation, so we'll see. Still, pretty exciting stuff. So it's been a crazy last couple of weeks on the channel here. I've gotten a lot of new subscribers. So if you are new here, I just wanna say welcome and thanks for subscribing. I'm gonna work really hard to make sure that you are glad that you subscribed. And if you are new here, uh, check out down in the comments, say hi, there's a lot of really cool people down there that have a lot of fun stuff to say. I think you'll enjoy it. And if you're not a subscriber and this is your first time here and you like subjects like this, I encourage you to hit subscribe because I come back with stuff just like this every Monday. And speaking of the live streams, that is something that I have started doing a little bit differently recently. I'm starting to do them every Thursday now, so Thursday afternoons, central time anyway. Uh, you can check out. I've got a lot of cool topics that I'm talking about. It's going to be live streams. It's going to be fun. Go check it out. Special thanks as always to my Patreon supporters who helped make this show possible. If you would like to get some special perks and see a totally different vlog style video that I do specifically for Patreon supporters, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. And as always, if you have a question that you would like to have answered, you can ask it down in the comments below or hit me up at any of my social media places at answers with Joe. So thanks again for watching. Hope you guys go out there and have an eye-opening week and I will see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.